Do you want to rule? Do you see the issues of this grand kingdom and think, when will I take power? And how do I do so quickly as to have people lessen the damage that they do to my rule and my kingdom? Well, you've come to the right place. If you've ever heard of the term Machiavellianism, it means to do whatever must be done to get power, whether that be to cause chaos, endgame, steal, lie, and deceive, and whatever else, so long as you get what you want. Nothing is off limits. And to show my point of how people will rise to power using some of these methods, we will find the perfect Roblox game that just encapsulates chaos and order, the generic roleplay game. In generic roleplay game, the premise of the game is separated into roles. Everyone within the game has a role in the kingdom and those outside. There is a leader who dictates taxes and w wages, buys buildings, weapons, and manages the town. The council member who decides the laws for the town, guards who guard the town, and everyone else. Outside of this, however, exist the barbarians, people who wish to break, break into the town to cause chaos, havoc, and steal the food within it. Your first lesson is to understand that no man rules alone. The leader only has a claim, not because they have the most powerful weapons, though sometimes that might be the case, but because they were chosen in the line of succession and has the means to suppress those who questions their rule. Whether it be the popularity of the people or the control of the guards, you'll come to understand that a leader cannot rule without the people to consent to their rule. It is because of this that you, aspiring ruler, must understand the levels of power within this kingdom and those who seek to threaten it. In this kingdom lies positions of power open for you. The ruler is at the top, being able to dictate the lives of all in the kingdom. If they wanted to, they could max out the tax rates and make wages zero, keeping all the revenue for themselves. However, no man rules alone, and with that we see who is beneath the ruler. And that is... The council members. The council members are beneath the ruler, and they dictate the laws of the country. While the ruler can vote against the members, it is never a guarantee that leader that the leader's vote will, will lead to a victory. So, you, as an aspiring leader, must contend with the council members. Council members, while they are no leader, determine the laws that are made, and hence are very powerful when it comes to determining what is legal or illegal in the country, or in the kingdom, much to the benefit or detriment to the leader. Their main goal is to pass laws and make money. They are independent from the leader, however, making most players who are in this role uncaring of who is the leader, so long as they are able to pass their laws and get their money. While the council members are powerful, they are unable to properly enforce their laws. No, that work is delegated to those beneath them. That being the guards. Beneath the council members lay the guards. The guards work is to be enforcers of the leader's rule and upholders of the law that the council members decide on, being able to arrest anyone that is labeled as wanted on their screen. Their main job is to root out dissenters from the inside while also protecting the village from barbarians from the outside, who will always be a threat to the village, being the only ones that have a weapon. That this means that the guards are extraordinarily useful and hence are a necessity for the protection of the village and for the leader and beneath the guards lays everyone else. Outside of the normal power structure within the kingdom lays those outside of it, those who wish to constantly topple such a system, the barbarians. The barbarians are chaotic people whose main goal is to cause as much chaos in the village. They are numerous and are the greatest threat to any ruler wishing to get the throne, as they can cause mayhem in the village, making it impossible to govern. Because of this, they are your biggest threat to your power, and you must deal with them swiftly in order to secure it. However, now that you've come to understand who holds what kind of power as an upcoming leader, you must understand how to use each of these people to secure your rule. After realizing the people you must contend with on your path to becoming ruler, we get to how to actually become ruler. 
In generic role-playing game, there are two, technically three ways that a ruler can be overthrown. The first is that they resign. This is the most difficult as it is, as it is extremely rare that a person willingly resigns, making this unreliable and the worst option. The second is to kill them. Killing them is a bit of a task considering that it can always start a cycle of violence which leads to uh, first you kill them, you kill a competent leader, and then the next leader becomes incompetent or is incompetent, gets killed, and then that one gets killed, and then you, like I said, you start a whole cycle of violence that you might get caught up in, and you might just die in that cycle. However, if you're willing to risk it, as it is the most reliable method to overthrow a leader, the easiest way is to either be a guard or be a barbarian. Barbarians are good for killing as they can get a bow, which is a ranged item, allowing them to take the leader out with said range and it lets them basically be safe from everyone wanting them dead, specifically the guards. It's better when the leader stays on the tower overlooking the town as they're stationary and essentially a sitting duck able to be shot from anywhere so long as the range allows it. However, you must contend with the guards wanting to kill you, so your best option is to break in with a big group, causing chaos and quickly taking out the leader so that barbarian damage is minimal. Whilst this might sound easy, and kind of is, you're going to need a lot of money to finance yourself, but it'll also depend on gate health and how stable the kingdom is. Typically, the more stable a kingdom is, the less likely you, as a barbarian and as your fellow barbarians, will be unlikely to actually break into the kingdom. So, whilst barbarian is an easy option, it's not always the best option. So, let's look at the second role that you can choose to take out the leader. The second option is being a guard. Now, guards don't have a sword to kill the leader. Instead, they spawn with a sword, only allowing them to kill barbarians and prisoners and peasants. But don't let that stop you, as patience is the name of the game. You see, the more a leader survives, the harder barbarians will be to kill, as they will, as the AI will be of higher levels and will be more and more aggressive the longer your leader is alive. And considering that the guard starts off with a pretty weak sword, it's only a matter of time before the leader gets a short shot, or if you're really lucky, a gun shot. The thing about these weapons is they can kill anyone. And having those weapons, you basically can kill the leader. You have a chance of being arrested, of course, but so long as people hate the leader or the leader doesn't know, you have your chance to get the upper hand on them and eliminate them. The third and final option is that the leader leaves. Similar to resigning, they just leave the game, bringing the next leader to power. Now that you know some of the methods, with the easiest obviously being to kill them, rinse and repeat until you are finally the leader and your rule begins. Now knowing the positions of the people who matter to those who don't, it's time for you to rule. The hardest part? is surviving. You see, depending on the way you took power, you could have caused a cycle of violence leading to you not lasting very long in your reign. But at the same time, there are ways to potentially avoid this cycle. The first part, if you are struggling with the people, quickly placate the masses. Know that the people will typically want three things. Food, low taxes, and high wages. If you're a wealthy leader, then you never need to worry about low taxes or high wages as you have basically infinite amounts of money and you could go with zero tax rate and a very very high wage but if you are one without much cash you're gonna need to keep wages high i know that that might sound a little difficult but at the very minimum keep them at the same level as they were before you took control this is because lowering them can lead to people hating your guts and wanting you dead and it also leads to people being very unproductive leading to low food, problems with the kingdom, and the kingdom basically being open for a barbarian attack. So if you're not going to get killed from the inside by the people, you're probably going to get killed by the outside by the barbarians. Because of this, it is advisable to keep wages relatively high, and like I said, at the bare minimum, at the same level as they were before, so that way people don't complain as much. The next move is to keep your taxes low, but don't be afraid to boost them every now and then, and if people complain, make it rain money. And if they still complain, use the guards to arrest them and the council members to pass a law that they will make rioting illegal. Basically allowing you to secure your control, have the guards get some cash, and have the council members get in on the fun as well. 
For food, keep the prices of food low or non-existent, but encouraging people to farm is always a must because a steady food supply is always better than none. This can be done by buying the sickle store and buying best sickle for them, allowing people to harvest the food rather quickly and able to keep a very, very stable food supply for everyone in your kingdom. Step 2. If you're having trouble with the guards. For the guards, getting swords typically works and is able to calm them down a little. Just make sure you get one too and get one first, as don't rely on the guards to actually guard you because just like you, they might take any opportunity to kill you in order to take control or cause chaos. Because of this, it is advisable to almost never get best sword unless absolutely necessary and absolutely certain that your guards will not kill you. It is also advisable to at least listen to some of the guards and just try and keep them always at an arm's length when you're trying to rule. Step three, if you're having issues with the council. For the council, they're pretty uncaring. Just don't get on their bad side. Vote on their side or don't vote at all as that will allow them to basically not dislike you. You could aim for assassinations on the council members, but that would likely not do much considering that they're all likely Game Pass users. So the best thing to do is a don't mess with me and I won't mess with you policy, allowing them to pass laws that so long as it doesn't come to your detriment or doesn't come to affect you all too, all too much, you will gladly support it and you won't pay much mind to them. After all, they are mainly in it to get the money and get a house to make more money. For barbarians, as this will be your constant threat throughout the whole rule, get hammers for your people and better swords for guards. Like I stated, I'd risk getting swords, but obviously not best sword, just good sword would be enough. If you're having issues with barbarians with arrows, I would risk it and get a gun shot and a musket if you could. But I'd be very, very careful when giving it when giving your guards guns for the same reason for swords and the same reasons why barbarians have bows. They can easily kill you with ranged damage, and some might likely not hesitate to do so. So just make sure that you are always on top of things with your own weapons at any moment so that if one strikes and if an assassination attempt might occur, you will always be ready to attack them. And have your own loyal supporters on your side so that in any case, the guards or whoever might threaten you will be destroyed by the people. For survival now, the best bet that you have is to essentially not be in the kingdom at all. I know that that might sound a little contradictory, but I've seen a lot of people, and especially a lot of leaders, essentially retreat into the cliffs, into the mountains where no one can kill you, because it's the best option that they have in order to survive any ordeal against anyone. It's a sanctuary for them, and it basically makes it possible that they will never die, allowing them to have their rule eternal, even if the people disagree with it heavily. But, whilst you survive, be a little bit of a stable leader. And when they least expect it, hint, when you leave, max out taxation, kill a bunch of people, I mean, game in a bunch of people, allow a bunch of barbarians in, and watch from the sidelines as everyone tries to end you, but because you're in the mountains and no one can technically kill you, everyone's just gonna tolerate it and then complain on chat. <laughs> so good luck causing a bunch of untold chaos. However, it is now time for me to take my leave. In conclusion, just try and stay alive, know your keys to power, know how the game functions, know your allies and enemies, and do the best you can. So go on, my, the, my fellow aspiring ruler, make your kingdom.